Welcome to video 38 and it's great to have some new subscribers with us as well. Today I want to share with you ideas about adding scenic detail to your layouts. This class 150 is forming the 935 service from Guideford to Leafield Central Station. As usual, you're probably watching the train as it travels along the track. But let's do that again and this time ignore the train and have a look at the scenery in the background. The workshops under the arches, the busy main road in the background, the loading bay on one of the warehouses, and then along the platforms, passengers, news agents, signs, telephone boxes, and so on to give the detail that adds the realism. And so now we're going to have a look at the first range of buildings and these are scratch built buildings. But look at the yard. Look at all of the things that you can get to enhance a busy worker's yard where wood is involved. Loading is taken place, there are sheds there to be purchased and the whole area is covered with sawdust. Next door, in the Hunter's Works, they make barrels and you can see those being loaded onto one of the lorries. So there's a variety of things that you can do to enhance a scene and all of these details are readily available from a whole variety of manufacturers. As we move across the rooftops of the town of Ashpeth, we're just in time to catch this Class 59, which has been hired in to lead the 6E20 from Llanwern to Immingham. It takes us on nicely to this network rail yard. And it's interesting to note that even in the real world, network rail yards are very rarely a rectangle or a square. They tend to be whatever shape is available next to a railway line. And that's the case here. There's a whole variety of equipment here waiting to be used on the railway and a lot of this equipment can be purchased from Langley Models, PD Marsh, Osborne's Models, Harburn Hobbies and a variety of other retailers. A little bit of a search on the internet really can reach Adding detail is not always about putting people or objects or buildings onto the layout. It's also to do with vegetation. You can see here at the back of these sidings, they're pretty well neglected and overrun. And this is often the case in real sidings on the railway, but we forget about that. So notice the rust, notice the weeds, notice the bits that are overgrown. And all of this adds a touch of realism. This class 70 is piloting the 6E88 from Mount Sorrel to Tyne Yard and it passes a goods yard at the end of these railway sidings. This is another example of fitting a yard into an unconventional space. But if you add sufficient detail and make it look as if it is an area where work takes place, then it can be pretty realistic. Again, items in this yard are from PD Marsh, Trains for You, Harburn Hobbies, and Osborne's Models. then adding some of the detail can simply be a bit of rubbish. As these 250s arrive into Leafield Central Station for their next duty, look at the track in front of them and look at the rubbish that's been left behind by the last gang to do some repairs. On the other side of the tracks, the workers are preparing to install a new drainage system and they're being watched by an excited little boy on the wall. 
Next to the porter cabins that have been put there for their use, there's a whole pile of rubbish again. And then there are the pipes that they're going to be using for the new drains. But in the background, have a look at the gardens. Nicely tended gardens, there's a conservatory, there are vegetables growing, and people have been looking after it beautifully. The first range of buildings we looked at were scratch built, but all of the buildings in this village to create a different atmosphere come from SD mouldings or even Lilliput Lane. There are tennis courts behind that hotel and then we move on to a very busy marketplace. These stalls are kit built and a variety of little details have been added to create the realism. Here is a stall selling teas and coffees and then behind these buildings there's a small area of allotments again with a greenhouse and various other small buildings and then you can see children playing on the games equipment in the background of the school. We're going to have a look at a couple of depots next and the buildings now are from Faller and Keybury as plastic kits or from the Graham Farish scenic range of ready to plant buildings. As the class 57 arrives onto the depot notice the detail on the platforms, the advertising notice boards, the storage tanks, the refueling point behind the signal box, the vehicles and a whole variety of items of equipment around the depot. The inspection platform is from West Hill Wagon Works. Other items are from the Scenecraft Range, PD Marsh, again Harbour and Hobbies and Trains for You. Some of the pieces of equipment lying about are in fact scrap ends of other kits and uh, pieces of metal that have been left over unused and it's amazing what you can do with bits and pieces that you find lying about in your toolbox. So that was Leafield West Depot and next we're going to move across to Leabury Park Depot. At the entrance to the depot here we have a generator cabin, storage for paints and oils, a bit of area for scrap, fuel tanks with a tanker that's busy replenishing them. The concrete standing across the depot is made from sheets of fuzzy felt cut to shape. The class 37 arrives for refueling but all is not quite right at the refuelling point because some of the men are having to lift one of the drain covers to see why it is not pumping as efficiently as it should. There's another inspection platform in the background and next to the fuelling point there's the electric power cabin. The illuminated yard lights are from CR Signal. And now for something completely different, because we're going to have a look at the detail that's in the little harbour of Ellenmouth. We'll start on the seaward side first, because we're going to catch the 6C89 Mount Sorrel to Carlisle Yard, which is being led by the Flying Dustman. The working lighthouse is a scratch-built item made by a member of our Engage area group. 
We'll fly over the viaduct and go down into the little harbour. But the interesting thing here is that all of these buildings had nothing originally to do with model railways. I purchased all of these when on holiday in places like Cornwall. They were simply made for the tourist trade. But where the little bit of detail is added, the buildings actually can enhance a model railway in a beautiful way. This little building behind is made to represent Tintagel Post Office. Then, of course, that's a Lilliput Lane building representing Ashness Bridge. As we come round, we do get one building from Harburn Hobbies, but then others which were simply made for the tourist trade in seaside towns. And the boats add that bit of realism as well. None of these boats were actually made for Engage, but it's amazing how they can fit in and really create a very attractive little harbour scene. So I hope that's given you a few interesting ideas for detailing your own layouts. Bye for now.